Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, would you please welcome to our Friday Night Rock Show the one and only Mr. Wilco Johnson. Wilco, hey. how are you, sir? Hello, hello there. Hello there. I'm feeling, I'm feeling splendid. And uh, I've just been reading up about some of the stuff you've been doing. I've been a big fan for years. In fact, my band used to cover some of your tunes. Don't ask us for, oh. uh, don't ask us for any money for it. Mm. <laughs> we never got paid. However, you've been doing this, uh, the film that you've just done about Dr. Feelgood. Mm. That attracted some attention because you've got such a face. <laughs> and now you're now you're in this thing with Sean Bean, yes? Sorry. Sean Bean, you're doing, you're playing a mute executioner. Well, well, this is the thing. Well, I, I was in in this Game of Thrones uh, thing, which actually uh, we filmed last week. Hark at me, we <laughs> uh, filmed last uh, last year. And I, um, in fact, the second series is going to come. We're going to start doing that in October when this tour I'm doing is finished. I mean, they had to hold up the filming, you know, to, to accommodate my touring. But, um, yes, yes, I'm a mute executioner. It's a brilliant, brilliant part for any actor, because my, you know, this part I play, the chap's had his tongue cut out, therefore there are no lines to learn. And basically, all I've got to do is walk around giving everybody dirty looks, which I'm, you know, I can do that. Yeah, I actually read some of the other things you said about your mindset, but I can't read that out on radio, but it was basically, I'll have you, you blighter. Well, that's the kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you'd be good at that. Um, so you're, you're doing Leicester. You're doing the O2 Academy in Leicester, and mm. you're doing uh, one in Nottingham. Lots of our listeners around that area, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Are you still enjoying gigging as much as you used to? Oh, uh, well, more so, I think. I mean, um, it's about the only thing I do enjoy these days. I like, uh, you know, I kind of, yeah, I do, I do, yeah, I do like it. Because I'm thinking mainly because, the, like, the band I've got is uh, is, is absolutely the best one ever, which uh, the band consists of my glorious self and, uh, and the one and only Norman Watroy on the bass. Uh, we, me and not Norman and I, he said, have been uh, we've been working together for. No, I'm not even going to work out how long it is. A long, long time, right? <laughs> now, and we also have Dylan Howe on the drums, who is far and away the best drummer I've ever worked with. Now, this and, is Steve Howe's son, yes. That is that's right, actually. We mustn't taunt him about his dad, but we do. <laughs> well, you're not into prog rock, then? <laughs> oh, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a very broad-minded fellow, you know, but any any opportunity I've got for sort of winding someone up, I'll take it. Right, Wilco, I want to take you right back to when you started learning to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. um, question for you. Why did you opt to not use a plectrum? Well, this is a... This is a, 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 a um, I am, in fact, left-handed, and uh, when I first started playing, this is right back in the 60s uh, and uh, before Jimi Hendrix and everything, and, and, it, it, and being left-handed wasn't necessarily very groovy. And uh, I, was, I was twanging away trying to learn to play the guitar, and frankly, I was useless. I mean, I was a real duffer. Everybody at school could play better than me. And so uh, after, after a while, I decided to turn it around, learn to play right-handed. Uh, difficult thing to do, because it goes against all your natural instincts and everything, but I succeeded. Um, I, I, I never kind of got to, got to the trick of holding onto a plectrum with my right hand, so I, 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 I stopped, you see. And, and uh, you know, sometimes your fingers bleed and all that, but... Um, I mean, the, you, when you think over the years of the money I've saved on plectrum, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant, you know. It also gave you quite a unique sound, I believe. Uh, it, I, yeah, I mean, I've, well, I suppose like everybody, I mean, I've, I've ended up with a, with, a, with a style of sound of my own uh, simply by, because, I mean, I, when I was learning, I wanted to play exactly like Mick Green from Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. He was my hero. And uh, I was I was uh, trying as hard as I could to copy him, but of course I got it all wrong, and uh, ended up with my own style. 
Now, um, Wilco, you know, the no plectrum thing has got something to do with that. What made you choose, because I know you favour this, what made you choose the Telecaster? Because Mick Green played ah, one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, we were watching it this morning um, and our son came in and he just went, look at the way that guy moves, what is he on? And <laughs> it's, it's quite some crazy moves he got there. Yeah, well, I can assure him that I'm, you know, I actually a very, a very sober and um, and and uh, a clear-minded person, you know, and, and um, the way I move is uh, completely beyond my control. He loved it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> can you still jump like that, Wilco? Uh, actually, <laughs> no. <laughs> since, I mean, I am, I am, I am at that classic rock and roll age of sixty-four. Where the hips and go. Uh, and uh, I, I, I did I left the jumping out some time ago. I mean, we, you know, I look at some of them things in the, um, Doctor Feelgood days. You know, when I'm kind of pogoing for 24 bars, and I think no, no. I mean, the thing is, you can you you know you, you jump as hard as you can, and you really you only go up about six inches, <laughs> and then you've got the problem of actually landing and not falling over. So you know, I solved that problem by not doing that. Nice one. Well, I've I've, I've been uh, looking up about some of the other stuff you've been doing. Uh, you had a, I, I wish I'd seen this, a Mad, Bad and Dangerous tour with the Hamsters and John Otway. That must have been fun. Was it fun? It was, uh, it was actually absolutely fun is the right word. I think we all had a really very, very good time on, on that tour, particularly because we we made it into a, into a uh, it wasn't just three bands, it was a kind of show. Uh, and in fact, we all ended up uh, on stage together at, at the climax of this show, uh, um, playing fabulous versions of um, "Born to Be Wild" and uh, "Hit Me with Your Rhythm Stick." Brilliant! And it, it really was most enjoyable. Now that takes me on to my next question, which, is, of course, is you were for quite some time a blockhead. No, I was indeed a blockhead, and I think blockheadery is something that you probably keep for life. Now, what was it like working with Ian? Uh, Again, I think I think a couple of the happiest years of my life. Um, all, all <laughs> Ian, uh, who I loved very much, uh, could be a. He had his darker side, you know, and uh, could <laughs> sometimes could be a bit of a handful. But uh, oh no, I had I had great fun because um, they were such a great band, and I, and I think Ian's Ian's was such a one-off musically. Um, and he was somebody. He was somebody who I had admired r right back in the early sort of days of playing in the pubs when I was in Doctor Feelgood and he was in Kilburn and the High Roads. And I'd al I'd always uh, I'd always admired his his songs and it were just him, you know. And and uh, it was it was just great playing with. Him. Also, the thing of playing great big huge gigs and I'm just in the rhythm section man you know I'm back there with Norman and Charlie playing these playing these rhythms Ian's out the front there he's the front man with all the stage fright and all the, all the worry of the you know so it was just pure enjoyment for me oh I'm well jealous I am um, right listen uh, this film Oil City Confidential when is mm. that coming out or is it out well it's been out it's, it's out it's out it's out don't you worry about it I think it was shown it's been shown on the telly I, don't know. I, I wouldn't know because I, I actually I have to admit I haven't got a telly, so I, I haven't seen my um, tongueless executioner thing. Or <laughs> we'll let you know but what it's, it's like. It's, a, it's available on DVD. <laughs> oh right, okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll grab that because it sounds excellent. And this is Julian Temple directed it. Yes. The, yes, in fact, I, I can recommend to um, Ju Julian Temple. I think is a, is a well, he's brilliant. And he's, he's just made such a good film uh, about about Doctor Feelgood and everything. I mean, I, 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 I'm always re reluctant to sort of watch myself on film or, or read about me or anything like that. You know, it's a very kind of shy making. And uh, and um, I I didn't actually see this thing until it was the when it was first shown at the National Film Theatre. And when I, of course, I had to go and drink some champagne and go and watch the film. And I'll tell you what, it not me. It's very, very, it's funny, and it's uh, it, it's a good film. So I, everybody should rush out and and buy this um, DVD. I think we will. We'll well, go. I'm yeah. going to. Yeah. Now this Sunday you're at the O2 in Leicester, which is our hometown. Um, uh -huh. We are coming to see you. 
Um, well, great. What, what can we expect? Well, you can expect three chords and 12 bars <laughs> and, um, uh, and lots of whizzing about sideways, if not vertically. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. And you're also at Nottingham Rescue Rooms on October the 2nd. Yeah. So, so we get two chances to see you. Yeah, so come on, people. Get down there and see yeah. the amazing Wilco Johnson. Now, Wilco, before we go... Yeah. Um, I, I'm, you're probably fed up with being asked this question, but I have to ask it. Uh, Are you ready? Uh? Are you ready? I'm ready, ready. What's your favourite fish? My favourite fish is the flounder. Oh, can't believe We've it. never had a flounder. We've yeah. never had a right. flounder. Definitely, definitely the flounder. <laughs> we always ask, what's your favourite fish? And we get some very surprising results, but flounder we've never had. Sea bass comes up quite a lot. Wilco, thank you very much <laughs> okay. indeed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mr. Wilco Johnson.